Hey everybody, Sam here. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to the next video of our bedroom renovation in our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home. In today's video, we're gonna be continuing to do drywall work, but the main biggest interesting factor is the fact that I was wrong, dead wrong. Silverview pointed it out to me and I fix what I was wrong about in this video. Let's go. What's gonna make this piece the most complicated is the fact that our ceiling does vault. So I'm gonna have an angle at the top. I do have to cut some of it off because from this corner to the top to the ceiling is less than four feet. So let me show you guys my trick and how I measure for my angles to cut for vaulted ceiling panels with this wall. So I got my tape measure here and I'm gonna hold it up against the ceiling and I'm gonna look at 48 inches, which is the width of the drywall. I'm gonna move it left and right so to raise up and down until 48 inches is even with the top of the drywall I already have put in place. With that position found here, I'm now gonna measure from this mark to the wall, 29 and three quarter. So now I know that I'm gonna be coming in 29 and three quarter inches to 48 inch height at that point. So all I'm gonna do is have my panel go up 41 and a quarter, Go left, 29 and 3 quarter, and then connect the dots with the line and cut that corner piece off. So I'm measuring over 29 and 3 quarter. I'm going to measure up 41 and a quarter. And then I'm going to take my level, just as a straight edge, and I'm going to connect my two points. And that gives me my line. This is the line I'm cutting to match up with my ceiling. I've been asked if I have any special techniques or advice to give on how to get straight cuts with a utility knife and drywall. And I pretty much can only come up with two. One is when you're cutting, don't look where you've been. Look where you need to go to have straight cuts. The other thing is to, if at all possible, lock your arms and your wrists solid. Move your body, move your larger joints rather than your wrist. That way you're not finicky and wiggling as much. That's the two things that I generally do that gives me pretty good results. Okay, good enough for me. If you're a professional drywaller, you may scream and cry at what Sam says good enough. But I'm not a professional, I'm just a guy cutting some drywall in his bedroom to get moved back into his house. So in this example where I have this diagonal piece, I'm going to lock my arm as good as I can and I'm gonna move back and forth with my legs as much as I can. I'm not gonna try and do this. There's too many joints, too much play in the area. So I'm gonna try and lock it in and just pull it back by moving my body backwards instead of pulling my arms back. This little slither is going to be difficult, so I'm going to cut the edge. That should stop the paper from tearing beyond. We got it scored, now we'll give it a pop. Fold it over and cut the paper from behind or wherever just to get it in this little crease. thing usually when you get to the edges you're not going to have clean cuts you can do a back scraping to where the blades facing this way I'm not going to dig into it I'm just going to kind of pull it back that helps get the riffles and the weirdness kind of evened out and flattened out not required but if you need to that's an easy way to kind of sneak up on your material without hogging out and chunking up your stuff all right, now I'm ready to go ahead and put the panel on the wall, hold it up there, expect that it fits and looks great, and then go ahead and drill it in and attach the panel with the screws. In the last video, I introduced myself and you guys to this drywall bit. I think it's pretty good, I like it. 
there was some learning curve on not digging them too far into the paper but overall i think it's really cool and i don't think i'll go back from using the drywall bit for drywall screws let's go ahead and put my parrot or my drill on my shoulder it's like a pirate's parrot it's a great place to hold it i'm gonna put it up here move you guys over and we will see the great success of sam's drywall cut or sam's failure either way it's going to happen now This fits, and it's a really nice crisp line up there on the ceiling, all the way across my butt joint down here at the bottom, and in the corner. So, awesome. Let's go ahead and start attaching this thing before I drop it, or it changes somehow. I think that turned out really good. Actually, that turned out very, very nice. The corner joint is nice. The ceiling joint is almost perfect. And the butt joint down here is great as well. As you can see, we do kind of put ourselves in a weird position up top with the drywall doing this kind of process. However, I don't think it's gonna cause any major issues. And it's kind of the same stuff we did in our boys' bedroom when we did drywall. And it's kind of, you know, the name of the game. With drywall, you're gonna have butt joints and they're not gonna be tapered. In case you don't know, drywall is only tapered on the long edges, like these right here. The ends, the short ones, the four foot ends, are not tapered at all. So anywhere you have those four foot ends butting up with others, you're not gonna have a trough for your mud to fill in. It's just gonna be a butt joint and you have to kind of feather those over the top. So there will be some feathering to be done up there, but I think it's gonna be fine. Like I said, we did the same thing in our boys room, didn't have any problems. We've not had any problems at all with that drywall cracking with the move and it sticking out visually. So I think we're good. All right guys, this is gonna be hard to see and I apologize, but I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing from over here rather than stopping and moving the camera. In order to match the same vaulted pitch over here on this top piece, I'm just holding it up as far as I can. Put my level up here. Holding it with my knee. And then I'm marking a line. This then gives me this angle. I'm going to cut this off. And then I'll be able to fit this better marking it as I go. This may look a little clunky, but sometimes it's really just easier when you're by yourself. Take all your tools up here, measure and cut, and do it all up here on the ladder. At least it is for me. It saves you a lot of up and down work. What I'm going to do now with this little piece that I've scabbed on is I want to split this two by three that's up here However, I want this piece to go over further for the doorway. So I'm going to kind of cut a notch out of it. That way it makes this transition seamless, yet gives me at least half of a 2x3 to attach the panel that's going to go here next.
I'm working on cutting the piece that goes on the wall back here behind me. It's another one of those, mostly rectangular with the corner cut off. I want to show you up close here what I've got. I did measure my height, which is marked, and I measured my run, which is marked. I'm just going to connect the lines, and that's how I get my angle piece. So if camera lady will come on over, wherever you need to, I don't know. I've got my rise, run, yeah, it's upside down, yeah, rise over run, whatever guys. That's the diagonal that I'm going to be cutting off that will match the ceiling. And this is some more of that technique of back scraping the drywall to smooth out the cut. It also sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Well, it's a, it's pretty close. That's how you get dust-free drywall cuts with an oscillating tool. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this evening because it's pretty dark, pretty late, and I'm out of drywall as far as full sheets. So, you know what that means? Another trip to Sam and Angela's favorite place to spend all of their money, their hardware store. See you when we pick this back up. There's a saying that it takes a man to admit when he's wrong. Well, I'm wrong. I didn't know I was wrong until after the first video of doing the drywall when a couple of people chimed in saying, hey, I think you might be wrong. But then the really convincing factor was when Doug from different, who I email back and forth, we kind of talk a little bit here and there behind the scenes. He said, um, I think you're wrong. <laughs> so the problem is with this wall, the plastic. I installed the plastic thinking that, hey, it's a vapor barrier, we're good, that's all we need to do, keep on rocking and rolling. The issue lies with our climate zone, where our home is, which is in Tennessee. The fact that we don't need a class one barrier, which is what this is, we need a class two or three. Now again, all I'm doing is regurgitating things I just read last night. Class ones let no water through. This solid plastic, class one, not appropriate for us. In our area, what we need is a semi-permeable vapor barrier kind of retarder. Actually, it's a vapor retarder is what we need in our area. And that led me down the rabbit hole of, well, okay, can I just buy it as a roll? Is there some kind of appropriate thing I can get from the store? No, not exactly. So the solution for us is to backpedal, to take this drywall panel that's already been installed off the wall, to take this plastic off the wall, to take this old yellow insulation off the wall and just install new insulation. With roll insulation, at least what we buy and what we've used commonly, and it has that brown paper, the craft paper backing, you know, the stuff you see in the house once it's all installed, that is the vapor retarder. That's the appropriate membrane you need for installation. And that's why whenever you see us put it up, we put it up and we're done. We don't add any vapor barrier on in addition to that. I knew that much, but I didn't know that there was a difference between class two, three, and one. And so now we know. All right, now we get to have fun unzipping this, taking it out, and putting in more insulation. wasn't too bad they easily came apart and it's nice at least to see the wall I guess it uh, looks as I had expected uh, no rot no damage no holes no nests and really nothing wrong I guess it could also be kind of like a time capsule on the original mobile home wall and how they built them back in 1988 you know you've got two by four studs yes ours are two by four studs 
And then you've got your aluminum siding. And that's about it as far as between you and the world. Then you put fiberglass in between and cover it up with some thin drywall. That's how they rolled back then. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bust out our electric stapler. I had some questions in the installation video. Here's a look at what we've got. Um, we've had the manual hand staplers forever. Angela had problems with those hurting her wrist and since she usually does the installation, installation that um, I went ahead and bought her this electric one and it's worked really well ever since. So we kind of keep it with us. We have drop cords run from our generator all the way in here to the house. That's how we have a box fan, a work light, and that's how we power this thing too. And like that, 30 minutes later, the problem is fixed. We've got some nice uh, wallpaper covering. Sure. And we're going to cover back up with drywall. So two things you may be wondering. One, what is this up here? This is our blocking for our mini split air handler unit that goes in our bedroom. We have mini splits in the house. This is the blocking to support it and to mount it. Likewise, this little tube here, that's what goes through the wall to the outside. And that's where the compressor lines, condenser lines, drain lines, power line all go through. So that's what that is. Question number two you might be wondering is, well, this is brown craft paper. Why don't you just go get a roll of that from the craft store and put it up that way? The reason we didn't is because this is not just craft paper. It is impregnated with, I don't know, magical stuff. Uh, it's kind of black, so it makes me think it's probably an oil-based, petroleum-based, or tar-based substance to help it not, I don't know, not, not do its job. But this is not just straight up craft paper. So that's why we didn't do that, just in case you were wondering. The other thing maybe is, uh, I don't know, do you attach the flanges of the insulation to the face of the studs or the inside cavities? I don't know. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. We'll just call the whole thing off. I've probably already said it in this video, at least I think I did, but I see comments pop up on my phone from you guys from our last video, which was starting the drywall. And I guess I didn't answer it then about this drywall bit. This little guy, yeah, I really like it. I uh, don't know why it took me as many years old as I am to say, hey, I'll give it a try. But man, I wish I had earlier. This is also a bit from one of those really, really cheap like workshop tool depot outlet stores and it's not even probably what I would consider super high quality but it's holding up pretty well so yes two thumbs up from Sam saver for drywall and man just don't wait as long as I did to get it because it's really cool
Well, as I stand here and look around, the bedroom not only looks good, it feels good, and even though it was a pain, I am glad that I was able to fix that wall. I appreciate the constructive, not really criticism, there wasn't any criticism about it, it was more of a, hey, you might want to look into this. I really appreciate that from you guys. It did mean more money, it did mean more work, but in the end, it's a better thing. It's a better home, it's a better room, and that's really what matters. The extra 30 to 45 minutes, the extra $60 was, you know, done now, but it's forever. For, okay, for the life of this house at least. So looking at the uh, two tones of our walls here, it almost looks like we painted one, but again, that's just the differences in the paper color from the two different, I guess, lots or manufacturing, probably facilities, who knows, of the two sheets of drywall that, okay, well, the two packs of drywall we bought. To recap on some tool talk, uh, the blind mark tool, even though I didn't use it in this video, still love it. The Q bit, the oscillating tool cutout bit for the boxes, still great and the drywall driver bit, that one takes the cake for this video. For this episode, the cake is taken by the drywall bit driver. That little guy, worth it. Worth the dollar I paid for it at that cheap tool store, but worth me going and finding some more, probably better quality ones with a stronger magnet to keep and use. Because while this room is largely done, there's still quite a bit more drywall to do before we get to move in. Speaking of more work to do before we move in, the closet here, that's going to be our next focus. We're going to jump into the laundry room area. We're going to have some more demolition. We're going to redo the floor, the walls, probably some insulation. Who knows what that back door holds. While I don't believe there is any rot, uh, there's no telling. So that's going to be what's coming up next. If you are interested in mobile home renovations, if you're interested in single wide mobile home back door floor exploratory surgery, then stick around. That's what we got coming up next or in the near future because that's honestly what we're doing out here. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for us down below. Otherwise, take care and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. One last thing, guys. While we are not immediately jumping to it next, if you know of any good tools, techniques, or things around drywall finishing that you think we may want to check into, uh, any kind of tools you think you always wondered if they work or not, you want us to get them and try them out, let us know. We have the basic drywall finishing tools already. The mud pans, the knives, the various size taping knives and all the things like that. We have our mud already purchased or drywall joint compound, as well as the mesh and everything for taping the joints. I just want to offer you guys, if you want to throw in your two cents on drywall finishing, now is the time. Real life, we're probably two weeks away from finishing drywall. We're going to hold off on finishing until we are ready to finish all the places that we have drywall to install. That's going to be an easier, more like bulk way of doing the work. So you have time to see this video, check in some research or send us a comment and we'll have time to read it and digest it. Either way, we really do appreciate you guys. You guys do give us a lot of ideas, tips and tricks, and not always does it work out that we, you know, you, we do the video, you see it and we can apply it. But this is one of those instances and why I wanted to stop to come here to tell you that and offer you the chance to throw some, you know, advice our way, drop some truth bombs, whatever. You know what I mean, hopefully. And welcome back to the next part of our minervation. Min min wow, we'll do minervation. Mm -hmm. I'll show you my cutting technique here. The drywall seam here, and I'm looking for 48 inch. What is that? Out of the way, dustpan. Yeah, I'm consistently not on the line. <laughs> oh my gosh, turn the camera off. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> That's not gonna work. <laughs> How about this? Is this better? Where are you on the seventh? I really just wow blinded myself. I did mention this drywall bit video. Yep. Let's do that again. I'm working on the cutting. The cutting. Man. I'm working. <laughs> See you jiggle the camera. You love my grammatical faux pas. <laughs> How come I could say that fine? Whatever. 
Well, I just realized I left you guys with the ugliest corner in the room to look at. Yeah, enjoy it. How about something nicer? How about this view? This is nicer. Bye.